I'm Ben Cummings from Trek It ATV, and today I'm going to be giving you a little behind the scenes look into our 2300 kilometer trip around the province of New Brunswick. Another 60k to go. Make sure you're in the center, like, so that we'll, we'll give you enough gas. Oh, give me a <laughs> this belt, I'm yeah, right. This stuff's yeah. supposed to be the best stuff I saw. I'm Ben Cummings from Trek It ATV, and today I'm going to be giving you a little behind the scenes look into our 2300 kilometer trip around the province of New Brunswick. So let's dive into episode one. We love ATV in New Brunswick. The last two years, we've been out in the back country enjoying wherever the wheeler will take us. The first year, most of the crew were new to ATVs, and it was simply exciting to explore. Year two, and a little more seasoned, we continued to find special places along the trail. Special places like Bathurst, Sussex, Skedaddle Ridge, and the York and Russia Gornish trails, and all the destinations in between. But this year we wanted to do something crazy. The next level, completely out of our comfort zone. We decided to take 15 days and circumnavigate the province on ATVs. Yup, do the loop around the whole province. Here's the issue. Unlike the snowmobilers that already pretty much have a loop around the province, there's no universal trail that goes from club to club, community to community, to do a loop around the Pitcher province. I'm going to say it again, there is no trail to follow. So we foolishly decided to attempt to blaze a path of our own and head out for over a 2,000 kilometer ride of a lifetime. What possibly could go wrong? Come ride with us. This is our story. We headed to Dad's place to zen out for the evening before tomorrow's big trip. So I didn't actually join the Trekit crew until season two, where I, I mean, the only thing that I filmed was the winter episode. But I actually met them the final episode of season one during the Dave Sports Ramble. And then for this season, Ryan and I, we had a couple of Zoom calls and then we sort of had some auditions and trials for the actual filming. It's perfect visuals for anybody like outside the province. Cause you get this tiny little jerk dosh, not even a village in New Brunswick, where they're allowing people to drive straight through over the bridge. And it's really pretty from a drone. And, and then we were headed out on this trip. We had a few little planning sessions with a few different people and- The secret to our success yeah. is, I get the camera out, Mitch. Right in your face. Tell yeah. me what just happened. Yeah. So you're all covered with mud and you just yeah. flipped your bike. And the camera and then... is right here. Yeah. yeah. And the microphone is built in right here. Yeah. Because yeah. so we don't got time. Because right? we don't got time to mic you up. No, like, no like you've just fallen we off your bike. Like a, a pro mic like that. It's, I mean, that uh, we don't have time to get that on. He has this vision of him, me running the camera while he's in the shower. Right? Like just seeing the steam come off. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Right. and me just going, oh, this yeah, feels yeah, so yeah. good. We don't actually show that, but there was a lot of preparation that went into actually getting to this point. Christian had arrived just before us and now the gang was all there. Christian didn't actually arrive before us. We all arrived together. It just, we didn't have enough room in the truck. We need to figure out where everything is gonna fit inside the support vehicle. Put the cooler up here. It's a nice flat spot. It's like it's like the place of honor. We can't we can't scuff this baby. So because I was behind the camera, I got zero say as to how the side by side was actually loaded. Dave Sports was gracious enough to let us borrow a Honda Pioneer 700 that we were able to use, but it was a used unit that they brought in, or they ended up purchasing, and it had some issues going in the beginning, but. Anyway, so I had no say as to how they were packing the side-by-side. -side. I probably would have done it a little different. I've toured with some bands and I've done numerous things, so I would have packed it a little differently, but I had no say because I was behind the camera. So that was their job. And this is where I'm gonna live for the next two weeks. That's me. All right. <laughs> 
No. No, 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 no. That may or may not <laughs> make it. Not but lose it. We need to make sure that the communication system's working. It's the last tour we have to have done before we relax. That was our first time actually trying the Cardo headsets, which are a Bluetooth headset that really meshes the crew together so you can talk. They're like motorcycle headsets, but they're a, a mesh that have a really good distance that they sort of connect to one another. So it was huge to be able to have that when you're driving so you don't have to stop and then trying to get filming points or waving at everybody. It was really nice to have those uh, communications. And to be honest, when I go out now, like Nicole, if Nicole and I go out, we can't like it's it is a world of difference to be able to actually talk to somebody and have somebody in your head but it was both a blessing and a curse because i had these four guys in my head for two weeks and when guys get hungry and tired and dirty uh, the comedy hours and junk <laughs> tends to come out that doesn't have a ring to it the day starts at the red rooster we meet members from the club number 58 and we're getting ready to go We unloaded the bikes, oblivious to the challenges that lie ahead. My job is to make sure those bikes are working. My job is to make sure everyone gets fed. My job is to look after Ryan. Uh, we're uh, just getting set up so we can leave for the trip. We have a slow leak already on Ryan's tire. We're going to get that pumped up. Hopefully we don't have to do a repair on this. That was something we don't talk about a lot, but Ryan's bike actually uh, didn't start at first. And that's something we didn't talk about uh, at the starting line there, but filling his tires was just the least of our worries. The Western Charlotte ATV Club is guiding us through the trails to get us to McAdam. Can you upgrade that for today? Absolutely. I think you need one today. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make oh, fun there, boy? <laughs> We've got over 2,000 kilometers to ride before getting back two Saturdays from now. So we best get started. As we pulled out of the Red Rooster, it finally started to sink in. These guys, this gear, and our bikes are home for the next two weeks. They made a big point of they carried everything they needed on their backs or in their ATVs, which they did for the most part. They carried all of their camping gear, all of their clothes, and most of their tools. However, because I was living in the support vehicle, the side-by-side, -side, and something you really don't talk about on TV is I had all of the food equipment, the tire repair kit, all of the camera gear. So I was full up. Like this four-seater Pioneer was full, full, which as a support vehicle, you don't really show, but I was the only one in charge. We didn't have a whole crew. I was in charge of all the camera gear and it, it, was, it was interesting. I'm really looking forward to this. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Nothing. to have the bike serviced and looked at before the trip. So we headed to Dave's Sports to get the bikes all thoroughly inspected and any parts that would not survive the trip needed to be replaced. That's the rig. So that was actually my first time seeing the uh, Pioneer 2 and it quite the omen that we would see it in the pouring rain and this was like a sun shower that just passed really quickly but man i i was hoping for a brand new machine i was hoping for like a polaris north star something really nice that we could take the enclosed air conditioning you gotta treat your your crew right 
yeah, that didn't happen. We are here at Dave Sports and I'm gonna see how much we can fit inside the box of the Ranger because this is gonna be the bike that I'm taking on the trip. Pretty. I mean, it's fancy, it's a nice, look. It's a four seater, Matt's given us a nice. Ben, what? you're way off base, man. No, this is the one, no, Matt said me. he was giving us a four seater that we could. It's this bike. This piece of shit? This piece of beautiful Honda's ness. Yeah. Sorry, man. A used Honda Pioneer with uh, with flappy canvas doors. But it's all closed in. It looks odd. But if it rains, then oh, it'll yeah. be dry. Oh yeah, no, no, that's great. I give you that. Look, but look. Oh wow. All the bikes are ready to go. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Nothing. Our first obstacle. So Rob, why, why aren't we driving here? What, what's the club gonna do about this water course? Um, the reason we're not driving here is because of the dentist stream and we don't like crossing through it. It's, it's a no-no anyway, but we don't, we don't like to do it. Some people do. As a club, we wanna change. So actually in New Brunswick, it's illegal to drive through many water courses. So sometimes there's water that gets on the trail, but it is illegal to drive across rivers and streams. So that's why we put a, a really big push on putting bridges in these places. And some bridges we find tend to be a little over-engineered, but all you need is some telephone poles and some pallet wood, realistically, just something that you can get over because you really don't want to be digging up that silt and like... We're, we're not out there to hurt the wildlife. We want to have a good time out on the trail. And if we can negate our impact on the wild, we, we want to do so. We have a bridge, a 53 foot flatbed that was donated to us by Milltown Trucking. And it's just a matter of getting the permissions in place and getting the exact spot for the bridge to be located. So when you build the bridge, you're gonna build a ramp so you can just like send her? <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right on. Yeah. All right, let's get back on the ATV since we've got 2,486 kilometers still to go. Uh -huh. Well, we do anyway. You yeah. guys got about 100 and some, so yeah. let's get going. Exactly. do anything with the kill switch. Yeah. Ryan's bike won't start. We're only at kilometer four. Oh, it's got no gas. Is there any gas in it? It's full. You just filled it up. Did you put diesel in it? As, as the content guy, I really wanted Ryan to be like he was seething there's a couple other times in the series where he gets very very mad but when ryan gets mad he doesn't get overtly like explosive he gets quiet and doesn't speak and uh he yeah he was very very angry you're at kilometer four you've had the bike all checked out and it doesn't start after one stop and this is day one. We barely got started. Like this was 10 o'clock in the morning. We had just gotten started and his bike doesn't start. Yeah. So there was a lot of bets and wagers. We barely get out of the parking lot. Oh. Check out Trek It Season 3 online now at trekit.com. And if you would like to uh, see more of these episodes of the crew reacting to our trip or other episodes that you are curious about, leave them in the comments below because we would love to hear from you. Otherwise, we will see you in the next episode. We're going to show a real transport hat. Yeah, this is a different thing. That's what I'm doing. Yeah,